सी आई ई टी एन सी ई आर टी प्रेजेंट्स ऑडियो बुक ऑफ सोशल साइंस फॉर क्लास एट एन टाइटल्ड आर पास थ्री टेक्स्ट बुक इन हिस्ट्री फॉर क्लास एट दिस इज द लेसन नाइन द मेकिंग ऑफ द नेशनल मूवमेंट एटीन सेवेंटीज to 1947 from page 109 to page 127 let's listen to the lesson 9 the making of the national movement 1870s to 1947 page 109 in the previous chapters we have looked at 1 the british conquest of territories and takeover of kingdoms 2 introduction of new laws and administrative institutions 3 changes in the lives of peasants and tribals 4 educational changes in the 19th century 5 debates regarding the condition of women 6 challenges to the caste system 7 social and religious reform 8 the revolt of 1857 and its aftermath 9 the decline of crafts and growth of industries on the basis of what you have read about these issues do you think indians were disconnected with british rule if so how were different groups and classes dissatisfied figure 1 police tear gas demonstrators during the quit india movement page 110 the emergence of nationalism the above mentioned development led the people to ask a crucial question what is this country of india and for whom is it meant the answer that gradually emerged was india was the people of india all the people irrespective of class color caste creed language or gender and the country its resources and systems were meant for all of them with this answer came the awareness that the british were exercising control over the resources of india and the lives of its people and until this control was ended india could not be for indians the consciousness began to be clearly stated by the political associations formed after 1850 especially those that came into being in the 1870s and 1880s most of these were led by english educated professionals such as lawyers the more important ones were the pune sarvajanik sabha the indian association the madras mahajan sabha the bombay presidency association and of course the indian national congress note the name pune sarvajanik sabha the literal meaning of sarvajanik is of or for all the people sarv is equal to all janik is equal to of the people though many of these associations functioned in specific parts of the country their goals were stated as the goals of all the people of india not those of any one region community or class they worked with the idea that the people should be sovereign a modern consciousness and a key feature of nationalism in other words they believed that the indian people should be empowered to take decisions regarding their affairs the dissatisfaction with british rule intensified in the 1870s and 1880s the arms act 
was passed in 1878, disallowing Indians from possessing arms. In the same year, the Vernacular Press Act was also enacted in an effort to silence those who were critical of the government. The act allowed the government to confiscate the assets of newspapers, including their printing presses, if the newspapers published anything that was found objectionable. In 1883, there was a few roar over the attempt by the government to introduce the Ilbert Bill. The bill provided for the trial of British or European persons by Indians and sought equality between British and Indian judges in the country. But when white opposition forced the government to withdraw the bill, Indians were enraged. The event highlighted the racial attitudes of the British in India. What does sovereign mean? It means the capacity to act independently without outside interference. Page 111 The need for an All India Organization of Educated Indians had been felt since 1880, but the Ilbert Bill controversy deepened this desire. The Indian National Congress was established when 72 delegates from all over the country met at Bombay in December 1885. The early leadership, Dada Bhai Naoroji, Feroz Shah Mehta, Badruddin Tayabji, W.C. Bonerji, Surendranath Banerji, Ramesh Chandradat, S. Subramanya Ayer, among others, was largely from Bombay and Calcutta. Now Roji, a businessman and publicist, settled in London and, for a time member of the British Parliament, guided the younger nationalists. A retired British official, A. O. Hume, also played a part in bringing Indians from the various regions together. Source 1. Who did the Congress seek to speak for? A newspaper, The Indian Mirror, wrote in January 1886. The first National Congress at Bombay is the nucleus of a future parliament for our country and will lead to the good of inconceivable magnitude for our countrymen. Badruddin Tayabji addressed the Congress as President in 1887 thus, The Congress is composed of the representatives, not of any one class or community, of India, but of all the different communities of India. A Nation in the Making It has often been said that the Congress in the first 20 years was moderate in its objectives and methods. During this period, it demanded a greater voice for Indians in the government and in administration. It wanted the legislative councils to be made more representative, given more power and introduced in provinces where none existed. It demanded that Indians be placed in high positions in the government. For this purpose, it called for civil service examinations to be held in India as well, not just in London. The demand for Indianization of the administration was part of a movement against racism, since most important jobs at the time were monopolized by white officials and the British generally assumed that Indians could not be given positions of responsibility. What does publicist mean? It means someone who publicizes an idea by circulating information, writing reports, speaking at meetings. Figure 2. Dada Bhai Naoroji Naoroji's book, Poverty and Un-British Rule in India, offered a scathing criticism of the economic impact of British rule. Activity From the beginning, 
the Congress sought to speak for and in the name of all the Indian people. Why did it choose to do so? Page 112 Since British officers were sending a major part of their salaries home, Indianization, it was hoped, would also reduce the drain of wealth to England. Other demands included the separation of the judiciary from the executive, the repeal of the Arms Act and the freedom of speech and expression. The early Congress also raised a number of economic issues. It declared that British rule had led to poverty and famines, increase in the land revenue had impoverished peasants and zamindars, and exports of grains to Europe had created food shortages. The Congress demanded reduction of revenue, cut in military expenditure and more funds for irrigation. It passed many resolutions on the salt tax, treatment of Indian labourers abroad and the suffering of forest dwellers caused by an interfering forest administration. All this shows that despite being a body of the educated elite, the Congress did not talk only on behalf of professional groups, zamindars or industrialists. The moderate leaders wanted to develop public awareness about the unjust nature of the British rule. They published newspapers, wrote articles and showed how British rule was leading to the economic ruin of the country. They criticised British rule in their speeches and sent representatives to different parts of the country to mobilise public opinion. They felt that the British had respect for the ideals of freedom and justice and so they would accept the just demands of Indians. What was necessary, therefore, was to express these demands and make the government aware of the feelings of Indians. Freedom is our birthright. By the 1890s, many Indians began to raise questions about the political style of the Congress. In Bengal, Maharashtra and Punjab, leaders such as Bipin Chandrapal, Bal Gangadhar Tilak and Lala Lajpat Rai were beginning to explore more radical objectives and methods. They criticised the moderates for their politics of prayers and emphasised the importance of self-reliance and constructive work. They argued that people must rely on their own strength, not on the good intentions of the government. People must fight for Swaraj. Tilak raised the slogan, Freedom is my birthright and I shall have it. What does repeal mean? It means to undo law, to officially end the validity of something such as a law. Source 2. In pursuit of gold. This is what a moderate leader, Din Shaw Vacha, wrote to Naoroji in 1887. Feroz Shah is nowadays too busy with his personal work. They are already rich enough. Mr. Telang too remains busy. I wonder if all remain busy in the pursuit of gold, can the progress of the country be advanced? Activity What problems regarding the early Congress does this comment highlight? Page 113 in 1905, Viceroy Karzan partitioned Bengal. At that time, Bengal was the biggest province of British India and included Bihar and parts of Orissa. The British argued for dividing Bengal for reasons of administrative convenience. But what did administrative convenience mean? Whose convenience did it represent? Clearly, it was closely tied to the interests of British officials and businessmen. Even so, instead of removing the non-Bengali areas from the province, the government separated East Bengal and merged it with Assam. Perhaps the main British motives were to curtail the influence 
of Bengali politicians and to split the Bengali people. The partition of Bengal infuriated people all over India. All sections of the Congress, the moderates and the radicals, as they may be called, opposed it. Large public meetings and demonstrations were organized and novel methods of mass protest developed. The struggle that unfolded came to be known as the Swadeshi movement, strongest in Bengal but with echoes elsewhere too. In Deltaik Andhra, for instance, it was known as the Vande Matram movement. Figure 3 Bal Gangadhar Tilak. Notice the name of the newspaper that lies on the table. Kesari, a Marathi newspaper edited by Tilak, became one of the strongest critics of British rule. Figure 4 Thousands joined the demonstrations during the Swadeshi movement. Page 114 The Swadeshi movement sought to oppose British rule and encourage the ideas of self-help, Swadeshi enterprise, national education and use of Indian languages. To fight for Swaraj, the radicals advocated mass mobilization and boycott of British institutions and goods. Some individuals also began to suggest that revolutionary violence would be necessary to overthrow British rule. The opening decades of the 20th century were marked by other developments as well. A group of Muslim landlords and Nawabs formed the All India Muslim League at Dhaka in 1906. The League supported the partition of Bengal. It desired separate electorates for Muslims, a demand conceded by the government in 1909. Some seats in the councils were now reserved for Muslims who would be elected by Muslim voters. This tempted politicians to gather a following by distributing favours to their own religious groups. Meanwhile, the Congress split in 1907. The moderates were opposed to the use of boycott. They felt that it involved the use of force. After the split, the Congress came to be dominated by the moderates, with Tilak's followers functioning from outside. The two groups reunited in December 1915. Next year, the Congress and the Muslim League signed the historic Lucknow Pact and decided to work together for representative government in the country. The Growth of Mass Nationalism After 1919, the struggle against British rule gradually became a mass movement involving peasants, tribals, students and women in large numbers and occasionally factory workers as well. Certain business groups too began to actively support the Congress in the 1920s. Why was this so? The First World War altered the economic and political situation in India. It led to a huge rise in the defence expenditure of the Government of India. The Government in turn increased taxes on individual incomes and business profits, increased military expenditure and the demands for war supplies led to a sharp rise in prices which created great difficulties for the common people. On the other hand, business groups reaped fabulous profits from the war. As you have observed in Chapter 7, the war created a demand for industrial goods like jute bags, cloth, rails and caused a decline of imports from other countries into India. Figure 5 Lala Lajpat Rai A nationalist from Punjab, he was one of the leading members of the radical group which was critical of the politics of petitions. He was also an active member of the Arya Samaj. Revolutionary violence The use of violence to make a radical change within society. Council An appointed or elected body of people with an administrative, 
advisory or representative function. Activity Find out which countries fought the First World War. Page 115 So, Indian industries expanded during the war and Indian business groups began to demand greater opportunities for development. The war also led the British to expand their army. Villages were pressurized to supply soldiers for an alien cause. A large number of soldiers were sent to serve abroad. Many returned after the war with an understanding of the ways in which imperialist powers were exploiting the peoples of Asia and Africa and with a desire to oppose colonial rule in India. Furthermore, in 1917, there was a revolution in Russia. News about peasants' and workers' struggles and ideas of socialism circulated widely, inspiring Indian nationalists. The advent of Mahatma Gandhi It is in these circumstances that Mahatma Gandhi emerged as a mass leader. As you may know, Gandhiji, aged 46, arrived in India in 1915 from South Africa. Having led Indians in that country in non-violent marches against racist restrictions, he was already a respected leader known internationally. His South African campaigns had brought him in contact with various types of Indians, Hindus, Muslims, Parsis and Christians, Gujaratis, Tamils and North Indians and upper-class merchants, lawyers and workers. Mahatma Gandhi spent his first year in India travelling throughout the country, understanding the people, their needs and the overall situation. Figure 6. Founders of the Natal Congress, Durban, South Africa, 1895 In 1895, along with other Indians, Mahatma Gandhi established the Natal Congress to fight against racial discrimination. Can you identify Gandhiji? He is standing at the centre in the row at the back wearing a coat and tie. Page 116 His earliest interventions were in local movements in Champaran, Khera and Ahmedabad where he came into contact with Rajendra Prasad and Vallabhai Patel. In Ahmedabad, he led a successful mill workers' strike in 1918. Let us now focus in some detail on the movements organized between 1919 and 1922. The Rolet Satyagraha In 1919, Gandhiji gave a call for a Satyagraha against the Rollet Act that the British had just passed. The Act curbed fundamental rights such as the freedom of expression and strengthened police powers. Mahatma Gandhi, Muhammad Ali Jinnah and others felt that the government had no right to restrict people's basic freedoms. They criticised the Act as devilish and tyrannical. Gandhiji asked the Indian people to observe 6 April 1919 as a day of non-violent opposition to this act, as a day of humiliation and prayer and hartal or strike. Satyagraha Sabhas were set up to launch the movement. The role at Satyagraha turned out to be the first all-India struggle against the British government although it was largely restricted to cities. In April 1919, there were a number of demonstrations and hartals in the country and the government used brutal measures to suppress them. The Jallianwala Bagh atrocities inflicted by General Dyer in Amritsar on Baisakhi Day or 13th April were a part of this repression. On learning about the massacre, Rabindranath Tagore 
expressed the pain and anger of the country by renouncing his knighthood activity find out about the jallianwala bagh massacre what is jallianwala bagh what atrocities were committed there how were they committed figure 7 the vault compound in which general dyer opened fire on a gathering of people the people are pointing to the bullet marks on the wall knighthood an honor granted by the british crown for exceptional personal achievement or public service page 117 during the rolet satyagraha the participants tried to ensure that hindus and muslims were united in the fight against british rule this was also the call of mahatma gandhi who always saw india as a land of all the people who lived in the country hindus muslims and those of other religions he was keen that hindus and muslims support each other in any just cause khilafat agitation and the non cooperation movement the khilafat issue was one such cause in 1920 the british imposed a harsh treaty on the turkish sultan or khalifa people were furious about this as they had been about the jallianwala massacre also indian muslims were keen that the khalifa be allowed to retain control over muslim sacred places in the erstwhile ottoman empire the leaders of the khilafat agitation mohammad ali and shaukat ali now wished to initiate a full fledged non cooperation movement gandhi ji supported their call and urged the congress to campaign against punjab wrongs jallianwala massacre the khilafat wrong and demand swaraj the non cooperation movement gained momentum through 1921 to 22 thousands of students left government controlled schools and colleges many lawyers such as moti lal nehru c r das c rajagopal achari and asaf ali gave up their practices british titles were surrendered and legislatures boycotted people lit public bonfires of foreign cloth the imports of foreign cloth fell drastically between 1920 and 1922 but all this was merely the tip of the iceberg large parts of the country were on the brink of a formidable revolt people's initiatives in many cases people resisted british rule non violently in others different classes and groups interpreting gandhi ji's call in their own manner protested in ways that were not in accordance with his ideas in either case people linked their movements to local grievances let us look at a few examples in kheda gujarat partidar peasants organized non violent campaigns against the high land revenue demand of the british in coastal andhra and interior tamil nadu liquor shops were picketed in the guntur district of andhra pradesh tribals and poor peasants staged a number of forest satyagrahas sometimes sending their cattle into forests without paying grazing fee they were protesting because the colonial state had restricted their use of forest resources in various ways source 3 the eternal law of suffering what did mahatma gandhi mean by ahimsa or non violence how could ahimsa become the basis of struggle this is what gandhi ji said non violence comes to us through doing good continually without the slightest expectation of return that is the indispensable lesson in non violence in south africa i succeeded in learning the eternal law of suffering as the only remedy for undoing wrong and injustice it means positively the law of non violence 
you have to be prepared to suffer cheerfully at the hands of all and sundry and you will wish ill to no one not even to those who may have wronged you mahatma gandhi 12th march 1938 what does picket mean it means people protesting outside a building or shop to prevent others from entering page 118 they believed that gandhi ji would get their taxes reduced and have the forest regulations abolished in many forest villages peasants proclaimed swaraj and believed that gandhi raj was about to be established in sindh now in pakistan muslim traders and peasants were very enthusiastic about the khilafat call in bengal too the khilafat non cooperation alliance gave enormous communal unity and strength to the national movement in punjab the akali agitation of the sikhs sought to remove corrupt mahants supported by the british from their gurudwaras this movement got closely identified with the non cooperation movement in assam tea garden laborers shouting gandhi maharaj ki jai demanded a big increase in their wages they left the british owned plantations amidst declarations that they were following gandhi ji's wish interestingly in the assamese vaishnava songs of the period the reference to krishna was substituted by gandhi raj the people's mahatma we can observe from the above that sometimes people thought of gandhi ji as a kind of messiah as someone who could help them overcome their misery and poverty gandhi ji wished to build class unity not class conflict yet peasants could imagine that he would help them in their fight against zamindars and agricultural laborers believed he would provide them land at times ordinary people credited gandhi ji with their own achievements for instance at the end of a powerful movement peasants of pratapgarh in the united provinces now uttar pradesh managed to stop illegal eviction of tenants but they felt it was gandhi ji who had won this demand for them at other times using gandhi ji's name tribals and peasants undertook actions that did not conform to gandhian ideals what do these words mean mahants religious functionaries of sikh gurdwaras illegal eviction forcible and unlawful throwing out of tenants from the land they rent figure eight a popular representation of mahatma gandhi in popular images too mahatma gandhi is often shown as a divine being occupying a place within the pantheon of indian gods in this image he is driving krishna's chariot guiding other nationalist leaders in the battle against the british page 119 source 4 it was he who got bedakli stopped in pratapgarh the following is an extract from a cid report on the kisan movement in allahabad district january 1921 the currency which mr gandhi's name has acquired even in the remotest villages is astonishing no one seems to know quite who or what he is but it is an accepted fact that what he says is so and what he orders must be done he is a mahatma or sadhu a pandit a brahman who lives at allahabad even a devta the real power of his name is to be tracked back to the idea that it was he who got bedakli or illegal eviction stopped in pratapgarh as a general rule gandhi is not thought of as being antagonistic to government but only to the zamindars 
वी आर फॉर गांधी जी एंड द सरकार दी हैपनिंग्स ऑफ 1922 टू 1929 महात्मा गांधी एज यू नो वॉज अगेंस्ट वायलेंट मूवमेंट्स ही अब्रप्टली कॉल्ड ऑफ द नॉन कोऑपरेशन मूवमेंट वेन इन फेब्रुअरी 1922 अ क्राउड ऑफ पेजेंट्स सेट फायर टू अ पुलिस स्टेशन इन चौरी चौरा ट्वेंटी टू पुलिसमैन वर किल्ड ऑन दैट डे द पेजेंट्स वर प्रोवोक्ट बिकॉज द पुलिस हैड फायर्ड ऑन देअर पीसफुल डेमोन्स्ट्रेशन वंस द नॉन कोऑपरेशन मूवमेंट वॉज ओवर गांधी जीज फॉलोअर्स स्ट्रेस्ड दैट द कांग्रेस मस्ट अंडरटेक कंस्ट्रक्टिव वर्क इन द रूरल एरियाज अदर लीडर्स सच एज चिट्टा रंजन दास एंड मोतीलाल नेहरू argued that the party should fight elections to the councils and enter them in order to influence government policies through sincere social work in villages in the mid 1920s the gandhians were able to extend their support base this proved to be very useful in launching the civil disobedience movement in 1930 two important developments of the mid 1920s were the formation of the rashtriya swayamsevak sangh or rss a hindu organization and the communist party of india these parties have held very different ideas about the kind of country india should be find out about their ideas with the help of your teacher the revolutionary nationalist bhagat singh too was active in this period activity read source 4 According to this report how did people view Mahatma Gandhi why do you think they felt that he was opposed to zamindars but not to the government why do you think they were in favor of Gandhi ji figure 9 chitta ranjan das a major figure in the freedom movement das was a lawyer from east bengal he was especially active in the non cooperation movement page 120 figure 10 demonstrators oppose the simon commission in 1927 the british government in india decided to send a commission headed by lord simon to decide india's political future the commission had no indian representative the decision created an outrage in india all political groups decided to boycott the commission when the commission arrived it was met with demonstrations with banners saying simon go back the decade also closed with the congress resolving to fight for purna swaraj or complete independence in 1929 under the presidentship of jawahar lal nehru consequently independence day was observed on 26th january 1930 all over the country it takes a loud voice to make the deaf hear in kalab zindabad revolutionary nationalists such as bhagat singh chandrashekhar azad sukhdev and others wanted to fight against the colonial rule and the rich exploiting classes through a revolution of workers and peasants for this purpose they founded the hindustan socialist republican association or hsra in 1928 at firoz shah kotla in delhi on 17 december 1928 bhagat singh azad and rajguru assassinated sonders a police officer who was involved in the lathi charge that had caused the death of lala lajpat rai on 8th april 1929 Bhagat Singh and B K Dutt threw a bomb in the Central Legislative Assembly. The aim, as their leaflet explained, was not to kill but to make the deaf hear and to remind the foreign government of its callous exploitation. Bhagat Singh, Sukhdev, and Rajguru were executed on March twenty-three, nineteen thirty-one. Bhagat Singh's age at that time. was only 23 figure 11 bhagat singh page 121 the march to dandi 
पूर्ण स्वराज वुड नेवर कम ऑन इट्स ओन इट हैड टू बी फॉट फॉर इन 1930 गांधी जी डिक्लेयर्ड दैट ही वुड लीड अ मार्च टू ब्रेक द सॉल्ट लॉ अकॉर्डिंग टू दिस लॉ द स्टेट हैड अ मोनोपोली ऑन द मैन्युफैक्चर एंड सेल ऑफ सॉल्ट महात्मा गांधी अलोंग विद अदर नेशनलिस्ट्स रीजनड दैट इट वॉज सिंफुल टू टैक्स सॉल्ट सिंस इट इज सच एन एसेंशियल आइटम ऑफ आर फूड द सॉल्ट मार्च रिलेटेड द जनरल डिजायर ऑफ फ्रीडम टू अ स्पेसिफिक ग्रीवेंस शेयर बाय एवरीबडी एंड दस डिड नॉट डिवाइड द रिच एंड द पुअर गांधी जी एंड हिज फॉलोअर्स मार्च फॉर ओवर टू फोर्टी माइल्स फ्रॉम साबरमती टू द कोस्टल टाउन ऑफ डांडी वेयर दे ब्रोक द गवर्नमेंट लॉ बाय गैदरिंग नेचुरल सॉल्ट फाउंड ऑन द सी शोर एंड बॉइलिंग सी वॉटर टू प्रोड्यूस सॉल्ट फिगर ट्वेल्व महात्मा गांधी ब्रेकिंग द सॉल्ट लॉ बाय पिकिंग अप अ लंप ऑफ नेचुरल सॉल्ट डांडी सिक्स एप्रिल नाइनटीन थर्टी वेमेन इन द फ्रीडम स्ट्रगल अंबाबाई फ्रॉम कर्नाटका वेमेन फ्रॉम डाइवर्स बैकग्राउंड्स पार्टिसिपेटेड इन द नेशनल मूवमेंट यंग एंड ओल्ड सिंगल एंड मैरिड दे केम फ्रॉम रूरल एंड अर्बन एरियाज फ्रॉम बोथ कंजर्वेटिव एंड लिबरल होम्स देयर इन्वॉल्वमेंट वॉज सिग्निफिकेंट फॉर द फ्रीडम स्ट्रगल फॉर द वेमेन्स मूवमेंट एंड फॉर देम सेल्वस पर्सनली बोथ ब्रिटिश ऑफिशियल्स एंड इंडियन नेशनलिस्ट फेल्ट दैट वेमेन्स पार्टिसिपेशन गेव द नेशनल स्ट्रगल एंड इमेंस फोर्स पार्टिसिपेशन इन द फ्रीडम मूवमेंट ब्रॉड वेमेन आउट ऑफ देयर होम्स इट गेव देम अ प्लेस इन द प्रोफेशंस इन द गवर्नेंस ऑफ इंडिया एंड इट कुड पेव द वे फॉर इक्वालिटी विद मैन वॉट सच पार्टिसिपेशन मैंट फॉर वेमेन इज बेस्ट रिकाउंटेड बाय देम अंबाबाई ऑफ कर्नाटका हैड बीन मैरिड एट एज ट्वेल्व विडोड एट सिक्सटीन शी पिकेटेड फॉरन क्लॉथ एंड लिकर शॉप्स इन उडिपी शी वॉज अरेस्टेड सर्व द सेंटेंस एंड वॉज री अरेस्टेड बिटवीन प्रिजन टर्म्स शी मेड स्पीचेस टॉट स्पिनिंग एंड ऑर्गेनाइज प्रभात फेरीज अंबाबाई रिगार्डेड दीज एज द हैप्पीएस्ट डेज ऑफ हर लाइफ बिकॉज दे गेव इट अ न्यू पर्पज एंड कमिटमेंट वेमेन हाउएवर हैड टू फाइट फॉर देयर राइट टू पार्टिसिपेट इन द मूवमेंट ड्यूरिंग द सॉल्ट सत्याग्रह फॉर इंस्टेंस इवन महात्मा गांधी वॉज इनिशियली अपोज टू वेमेन्स पार्टिसिपेशन सरोजनी नायडू हैड टू परसुएड हिम to allow women to join the movement page 122 peasants tribals and women participated in large numbers a business federation published a pamphlet on the salt issue the government tried to crush the movement through brutal action against peaceful satyagrahis thousands were sent to jail the combined struggles of the indian people bore fruit when the government of india act of 1935 prescribed provincial autonomy and the government announced elections to the provincial legislatures in 1937 the congress formed governments in 7 out of 11 provinces in september 1939 after 2 years of congress rule in the provinces the second world war broke out critical of hitler congress leaders were ready to support the british war effort but in return they wanted that india be granted independence after the war the british refused to concede the demand the congress ministries resigned in protest source 5 veer lakhan nayak was hanged baji mohammad president of the Nabrangpur Congress Orissa in the 1930s reports on August 25 1942 19th people died on the spot in police firing at Pabarandi in 
Nabarangpur. Many died thereafter from their wounds. Over 300 were injured. More than a thousand were jailed in Koraput district. Several were shot or executed. Veer Lakhan Nayak, a legendary tribal leader who defied the British, was hanged. Nayak, Baji tells us, was not worried about being executed, only sad that he would not live to see freedom's dawn. Baji Muhammad mobilized 20,000 people to join the national struggle. He offered Satyagraha many times over. He participated in protests against the Second World War and in the Quit India movement and served long jail terms. Figure 13 Sarojni Naidu with Mahatma Gandhi, Paris 1931 Active in the national movement since the early 1920s, Naidu was a significant leader of the Dandi March. She was the first Indian woman to become President of the Indian National Congress in 1925. What does provincial autonomy mean? It means capacity of the provinces to make relatively independent decisions while remaining within a federation. Page 123 Quit India and later Mahatma Gandhi decided to initiate a new phase of movement against the British in the middle of the Second World War. The British must quit India immediately, he told them. To the British, he said, do or die in your effort to fight the British, but you must fight non-violently. Gandhiji and other leaders were jailed at once, but the movement spread. It specially attracted peasants and the youth who gave up their studies to join it. Communications and symbols of state authority were attacked all over the country. In many areas, the people set up their own governments. The first response of the British was severe repression. By the end of 1943, over 90,000 people were arrested and around 1,000 killed in police firing. In many areas, orders were given to machine gun crowds from airplanes. The rebellion, however, ultimately brought the Raj to its knees, towards independence and partition. Meanwhile, in 1940, the Muslim League had moved resolution demanding independent states for Muslims in the northwestern and eastern areas of the country. The resolution did not mention partition or Pakistan. Why did the League ask for an autonomous arrangement for the Muslims of the subcontinent? From the late 1930s, the League began viewing the Muslims as a separate nation from the Hindus. In developing this notion, it may have been influenced by the history of tension between some Hindu and Muslim groups in the 1920s and 1930s. Figure 14 Quit India Movement, August 1942 Demonstrators clashed with the police everywhere. Many thousands were arrested, over a thousand killed, many more were injured. Bose and the INA Figure 15 Subhas Chandra Bose A radical nationalist with socialist leanings, Bose did not share Gandhiji's ideal of Ahimsa, though he respected him as the father of the nation. In January 1941, he secretly left his Calcutta home, went to Singapore via Germany and raised the Azad Hind Forge or the Indian National Army or INA. To free India from British control in 1944, the INA tried to enter India through Imphal and Kohima but the campaign failed. The INA members were imprisoned and tried. People across the country from all walks of life participated in the movement against the INA trials. Page 124 Figure 16 Molana Azad with other members at the Congress Working Committee, Sevagram, 1942. Azad was born in Mecca to a Bengali father and an Arab mother. 
well versed in many languages azad was a scholar of islam and an exponent of the notion of wahadat idin the essential oneness of all religions an active participant in gandhian movements and a staunch advocate of hindu muslim unity he was opposed to jinnah's two nation theory figure 17 chakravarti raja gopalachari speaking to gandhi ji before the gandhi jinnah talks 1944 a veteran nationalist and leader of the salt satyagraha in the south c rajgopalachari popularly known as raja ji served as member of the interim government of 1946 and as free india's first indian governor general figure 18 sardar vallabhbhai patel played an important role in the negotiations for independence during 1945 to 47 patel hailed from an impoverished peasant proprietor family of nadiyad gujarat a foremost organizer of the freedom movement from 1918 onwards patel served as president of the congress in 1931 figure 19 mohammad ali jinnah with mahatma gandhi bombay september 1944 an ambassador of hindu muslim unity until 1920 jinnah played an important role in the making of the lucknow pact he reorganized the muslim league after 1934 and became the major spokesperson for the demand for pakistan page 125 more importantly the provincial elections of 1937 seemed to have convinced the league that muslims were a minority and they would always have to play second fiddle in any democratic structure it feared that muslims may even go unrepresented the congress's rejection of the league's desire to form a joint congress league government in the united provinces in 1937 also annoyed the league the congress's failure to mobilize the muslim masses in the 1930s allowed the league to widen its social support it sought to enlarge its support in the early 1940s when most congress leaders were in jail At the end of the war in 1945 the British opened negotiations between the Congress the League and themselves for the independence of India the talks failed because the League saw itself as the sole spokesperson of India's Muslims the Congress could not accept this claim since a large number of Muslims still supported it elections to the provinces were again held in 1946 the congress did well in the general constituencies but the league success in the seats reserved for muslims was spectacular it persisted with its demand for pakistan in march 1946 the british cabinet sent a three member mission to delhi to examine this demand and to suggest a suitable political framework for a free india this mission suggested that india should remain united and constitute itself as a loose confederation with some autonomy for muslim majority areas but it could not get the congress and the muslim league to agree to specific details of the proposal partition now became more or less inevitable figure 20 jawaharlal nehru listens to mahatma gandhi before the bombay session of the congress july 1946 gandhi ji's disciple a congress socialist and an internationalist nehru was a leading architect of the national movement and of free india's economy and polity what does general constituencies mean it means election districts with no reservations for any religious or other community figure 21 khan abdul ghaffar khan the pashtun leader from the northwest frontier province with his colleagues at a peace march through bihar march 1947 also known as badshah khan he was the founder of khudai 
Khit Madkars, a powerful non-violent movement among the Pathans of his province. Badshah Khan was strongly opposed to the partition of India. He criticized his Congress colleagues for agreeing to the 1947 division. Page 126 after the failure of the cabinet mission, the Muslim League decided on mass agitation for winning its Pakistan demand. It announced 16th August 1946 as Direct Action Day. On this day, riots broke out in Calcutta, lasting several days and resulting in the death of thousands of people. By March 1947, violence spread to different parts of northern India. Many hundred thousand people were killed and numerous women had to face untold brutalities during the partition. Millions of people were forced to flee their homes. Torn asunder from their homelands, they were reduced to being refugees in alien lands. Partition also meant that India changed. Many of its cities changed and a new country Pakistan was born. So, the joy of our country's independence from British rule came mixed with the pain and violence of partition. Figure 22 Refugees from Rayatton, Punjab, gather in New Delhi in search of shelter and food. Elsewhere, Nationalism in Africa, the case of Ghana. The late 19th and early 20th centuries witnessed the rise of nationalism in many Afro-Asian countries. In many of these, nationalism arose as a part of the anti-colonial struggles for independence. Colonial rule in Africa was dictatorial. Only the chiefs were allowed to rule on behalf of the foreign powers. Alternately, laws affecting Africans were created in all white legislatures. Africans had no decision-making powers or representation, not until after the Second World War, at least. The forcible takeover of land from local owners or users increased taxation and poor working conditions led to many African protests. In 1957, Ghana, known until then as the Gold Coast, became the first sub-Saharan African country to gain independence. The freedom movement was led by Kwame Nkrumah's Convention People's Party through strikes, boycotts and mass rallies. In 1951, this party won a huge electoral victory. It opposed the existing system in which the British rulers had allowed the chiefs to nominate representatives to the legislature. It pressed the British to grant a legislature that contained no nominated or special members and won this demand in 1954. Elections to the new Legislative Council were held in 1956. The Convention People's Party won these, thus paving the way for the proclamation of an independent nation under the name Ghana. Page 127 Let's imagine Imagine that you are involved in the Indian National Movement. Based on your reading of this chapter, briefly discuss your preferred methods of struggle and your vision of a free India. Let's recall. 1. Why were people dissatisfied with British rule in the 1870s and 1880s? 2. Who did the Indian National Congress wish to speak for? 3. What economic impact did the First World War have on India? 4. What did the Muslim League Resolution of 1940 ask for? Let's discuss. Who were the moderates? How did they propose to struggle against British rule? 6. How was the politics of the radicals within the Congress different from that of the moderates? 7. Discuss the various forms that the non-cooperation movement took in different parts of India. How did the people understand Gandhiji? 8. 
Why did Gandhi ji choose to break the salt law? 9. Discuss those developments of the 1937 to 47 period that led to the creation of Pakistan. Let's do 10. Find out how the national movement was organized in your city, district, area or state. Who participated in it and who led it? What did the movement in your area achieve? 11. Find out more about the life and work of any two participants or leaders of the national movement and write a short essay about them you may choose a person not mentioned in this chapter the chapter 9 of total 10 chapters of the book ends here narrator akash ahuja technical coordinator buddy lang lingdo production assistant Meenakshi Kukreti producer Vandana Arimardhan presented by CIET NCERT New Delhi India